Today we're going to be taking a look at the Unifan AL120 version 2 from Lee and Lee. Let's get right into the graphs and the data. So first up is the case simulation test. The case simulation test can be looked in a couple of key different ways, but the most important for you, the viewer, is what size case do you actually plan on buying. If you're looking at a small form factor or a very ultra compact case, again, front to back airflow uh, with a CPU air cooler, the six inch mark is your key location. The six inch mark also is very representative of a short throw distance, meaning if you've got a uh, case fan blowing air up into your GPU, that six inch mark would be representative of that. Next, we have the nine inch mark. The nine inch mark is represented by your compact towers. Think an MATX motherboard type case. So it'd be squatter and relatively short. It should fit a GPU the length of the motherboard, obviously for the MATX, but probably not much larger than that. I think of the Dell Optiplexes um, as that nine inch mark. Then we have the 11 inch mark. The 11 inch mark is represented by your mid towers. Something like the Corsair 550D, Corsair 5000 series, uh, Corsair Obsidian 500 series, uh, Mashif the Fractal Meshify 2C, all represented by that 11 inch mark. Pretty much the most standard on the, on the market uh, right now. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark. This is represented by your large towers. Something like the Fract Design Torrent is that 14.5 inch mark. So this would be your very epic large towers. So this distance that we're measuring is the distance from the back of the case fans to the rough position of the CPU socket. So where your air cooler would be located. So this data would be specifically important for CPU air coolers. So I have a control fan. It is three parts A12, A5 to one part A14. 140 millimeter class fans like the A14 tend to do better at the 11, 14.5 inch mark while smaller 120s tend to do better at the six and the nine inch mark. By blending the two fans together, I hope to create a perfect, quote unquote, perfect fan to compare every other fan against. And so that's what I've done. Fans that are underneath it would be considered poor performers. Fans that are over top of it would be considered very good performance. Fans that are around it would be considered just fine and dandy. So my control fan, I would consider good, but not great in terms of overall performance. So I have listed on here a bunch of other um, leanly fans, but the one most of interest for this video is the AL120 version 2, and it is this blue line. It is very clear that this fan tends to spew air off to the sides without creating a nice focused airflow. I'm not sure why it's called AL, because I think the AL is supposed to stand for like airflow, while the SLs are supposed to be pressure optimized. So it's very clear to me that the AL is not airflow optimized. Otherwise, it would have a very concentrated airflow pattern, while the Infinity is actually significantly better than it. But all of them are pretty poor compared to my control fan. How about at 100%? Now, in general, if your case fans are running at 100% PWM fan signal, something has gone terribly wrong inside your case and it's overheating terribly. Um, that being said, um, sometimes there's a case in scenario where you're running that fast. So let's take a look. Over on the key, we've got the fan, the RPM is running, and the noise level is generating. The AL120 is quieter than some of its brethren. Actually, the Infinity is a little bit quieter than it for a very similar RPM. How about for that performance? Well, the AL is moving more air than the other uni fans, uh, even given its noise value of being kind of okay, but it is still louder than my, my control fan would have calculated been generating. So I call it okay. Oh, the Infinity on their hand is pretty impressive. How about compared to other fans? First, noise normalized. So I do have the other uni fans in here. I'm sorry, this graph is a little, graph is a little bit crazy, but here's the Infinity in this orange line. So specific for this video, the AL120 version two, it starts off actually pretty good at the six inch mark. So for a smaller case, it might be good, but as soon as you start getting farther away from it, it proves itself to be pretty poor in performance. It's not the worst, but it's not good either. How about at 100% PW fan signal? Well, the AL120 is the purple line now, and it is smack dab, kind of, I'm gonna call it in the middle. It's technically upper middle with the number of fans I've tested, but compared to like the best in the category, it's a um, pretty far cry away from them. But compared to like the nest, 
major grouping of what I call good fans, it's right at the top. So it's it's doing okay. In terms of its noise at that level, well, there it is, 24.7. And we do see that it is slightly on the noisy side compared to the other fans around it. So that is a little bit unfortunate. Next, let's take a look at airspeed versus noise rating in decibels. As I note, every 10 decibels is a doubling in noise volume. So just because a line looks linear doesn't mean it is linear because um, every 10 decibels is doubling. And the 9-inch mark was chosen because I need an airspeed over 0.5 meters per second in order to get a good, accurate reading. I want to take a quick tangent and for future plans for my... So, I want to talk about future plans. Um, I'm a little bit stuck. And I plan on keep making videos just the way I have, whether or not you all want to support me in uh, a monetary sense. So, but money would get me to that next level and unfortunately the world relies on money la 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 but basically what i'd like to do is i would like to buy a better microphone dedicated for noise testing uh 250 dollars uh, i believe a uh, better anemometer one that is more accurate to be able to register lower air speeds and more accurate air speeds uh 500 dollars. i want to build a little test chamber for more accurate noise testing well i don't know how much that'll cost but i'm going to build it myself and do as good a job as I can, hoping to reduce my decibel readings um, into the 20s rather than right now in the 30s uh, for ambient room noise. Uh, I want to build a little test system for doing my test analysis. All in all, it's like $2,000. Um, that is just where I am. I'm being real with all of you. This is Whether or not um, you subscribe to my Patreon, whether or not you... Uh, become a member here on YouTube. I'm going to keep vi doing videos until I reach that dollar value. And when I do, I'm going to redo all my test analysis with that new testing methodology that I'll be able to do with uh, all the new test equipment. Until I get there, I'll keep going with it the way I can, as best as I can. So um, I guess I want to thank you for any of your support that you're willing to do. And uh, really appreciate it. Uh, let's get right back to the scheduled program. So we have the AL1, the SL120 version 2 is this purple line, and it's pretty much flat. Um, don't buy it as a case fan, please. While the uh, AL120 version 2 starts off actually really bad, and then it kind of gains ground. It's still low, but it's climbing nicely. And then, poom, I don't know what else to call that. But it basically must hit a very specific um, uh, efficiency curve within the fan blade and blade design where it accelerates up and becomes actually pretty good for its noise value. Mind it's at the bottom end, so it's not very good, but it becomes good, uh, as I put it, for the amount of noise it's generating and the airspeed it's generating. So depending on what RPM you're running it, it's either crap or good. Uh, unfortunately, there's no ways around that. Only AL120 V2. AL120 V2. AL120 pull config. Next, we're taking a look at how it does to my CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. It is sort of halfway in between a high-density uh, radiator and a standard air cooler, at least I personally think it is. Uh, in both these two graphs, the better fans are going to be sitting top left, force fans are going to be sitting bottom right. Again, we have my control fan, three parts A12X5 to one part A14. And first and foremost, on the left side, we have RPM versus airspeed. This is a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this blade design at shoving air to my CPU air cooler. The control fan is sitting right here, and we do see that the SL120V2 is um, matching or slightly over my control fan. And amazingly enough, the AL120V2 is as well. Well, this is where it sits. We got my control fan in this blue line. 
And we do see that the infinity matches my control relatively closely. Um, the, the red line is the AL120 Vision 2. At lower RPMs, it pretty much matches my control fan. And then it fades away until higher, much higher RPMs, where it actually kind of starts doing better again. Okay-ish, I guess. Uh, next, we have how it compares to everybody else. And at 100% PWM fan signal, how do the fans rank? Well, the AL120 version 2 is outperforming the its brethren, which is kind of funny. So it outperforms the SL Infinity. It outperforms the SL120 version 2. Um, for its blade design, it's kind of remarkable, actually. So that's, that's just how it happened. So its airspeed is actually pretty good, but its noise level is a tad bit on the high side compared to other fans around it uh, for its given RPM. It's not in a terrible position in terms of that noise, but it is a little bit on the loud side. And in terms of that cooler, airspeed through the cooler versus decibel rating right here. So it starts off okay, kind of dropping towards the back, dropping towards the back, finally hit an efficiency point, and it kind of catches up. And it catches up pretty well at... Uh, it's maximum RPM, and at, uh, let's see, 2, 4, no, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's 70% PW fan signal is where it hits its peak efficiency. So it's like 70% and 100% are kind of two good points. But other than that, it's a little bit under-impressive, or unimpressive overall. The Infinity uh, has more in line with other fans, but it's got these weird joggles in it. So um, there are other fans that have a much smoother curve. So it's uh, better overall, even though it may end up in a worse position, kind of. Next, we have CFM testing. CFM testing is my least favorite kind of test. And it's mostly because of how other reviewers use it. Don't any, any reviewer who says this fan is good for case airflow because high CFM doesn't understand the science. I'm an actual aerospace engineer with a strong background in computational fluid dynamics. It is an area of my master's. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say uh, without sounding like I'm bragging. Uh, so RPM versus CFM, blade efficiency, and they're perfectly in line with each other. It's like case and point. In terms of noise performance, finally you see a separation, and we do see that the AL120 is worse than my control fan. How about comparing to other fans? Well, here the Infinity is doing really well. The AL120 is middle of the pack, and the SL120 is at the bottom of the pack. And at 100% PW and fan signaling, they are, the AL is pretty much in the middle, uh, middle of the graphs. So it's not a bad result, but it's in the middle of the graphs. And for point of reference, here's the A12S25, which is largely considered the best all-around fan. So its performance isn't that far off of the A12X25 in 100% PWM fan signaling. Now, how does, it, how does the graph look uh, CFM versus decibel rating? Well, here it is. The Unifan AL120 version 2 is sitting kind of towards the bottom end of this graph. So it is a bit on the noisy side for how much performance you're getting up to you to determine if its appearance is worth it or not. Next is value proposition. First, the AL120 version 2 is a $41 fan based off of standard retail pricing that I could find on Amazon. Um, that is the way all these fans are registered off of retail pricing that I could locate on Amazon. So uh, value proposition is a real simple calculation. It is performance per dollar. So bigger is better. So if you're an ultra tight budget, uh, you want to get the best value proposition possible. If you do have a little bit of extra wiggle room in your budget, I do recommend taking a look at the earlier graphs, comparing it to your value proposition to get the fan that hits the best ratio of performance, of true performance to value that works for you. So value pro so in value, the AL120 version 2 noise normalized is crap. It it's really bad. It's dog shh. So, in terms of 100%, it's still really bad. 
at the 11 inch mark. Um, it's not the worst. There are other fans that had no airspeed, but no. At 100% P on fan signaling, it's still no. So CFM testing, noise normalized, pretty bad. Uh, 100% pretty bad value. There are other fans that are better value. And through the CPU air cooler, very bad. So, is this fan a good value in any test? Absolutely not. This fan is terrible value. Um, do I think it looks cool? Well, this is my opinion. I think if I were to get a Lean Leaf fan, I'd get one of the Infinity series. Um, so, there you have it. All right, and at the end of every video, I do like to show off my raw data. This data does belong to me. It takes me around one and a half to two hours to generate this level of detail in my data. And as we progress through the evolution of this channel, uh, I expect more testing to take me longer to do, which is perfectly fine. I love collecting data, which is why I did it and started doing this fan testing because I was very unhappy with the way other reviewers were testing out fans. No one seemed to understand like fundamentally the way fans work and how to analyze them. So I decided to throw my hat into the YouTube algorithm. Anyways, uh, you're welcome to use this data however you would like, as long as it is for yourself. So you can put it into your own Excel table, calculate it out, create your own graphs, whatever you would like to do. However, if you want to use it in any sort of video, publication, written, or journal, I do ask that you reference me and my channel if you wish to make a reaction video to... Uh, my video, I do ask that you talk to me first. It's probably going to be just fine with me, but hey, it's good to ask first. Um, if you got suggestions on way I can improve my video to make it more enjoyable to watch, please leave that in the comment section down below. I am always trying to improve my videos. It just may take a little bit of time for me to implement the changes because I do a lot of recording all, all at once as I uh, do uh, like groupings of buying fans by like 10. So that means 10 reviews all at once and then publishing all at once, and then seeing your comments all at once, or distri distributed over 10 weeks. So it may take time for these cha the changes, suggestions to implement into future videos, but I do try to make them more these more enjoyable to watch. If you got suggestions for me, for fans for me to take a look at, please leave those in the comment section down below. I will try to get my hands on it to take a look at. I do ask they be available on Amazon, as that is the easiest way for me to acquire fans right now. Uh, other than that, please join me on Patreon or join me as a YouTube member. Uh, any and all support that you all give through um, that resource uh, goes directly into this fan testing right now. It would be upgrading all that stuff I talked about earlier. Uh, other than that, I'll keep going as I'm going, and thank you very much for making it this far in the video. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope to see you next time on Computer Tech and More. Have a great day.